Hey, what is going on guys? Vinny Hart here and welcome to the third annual March Mario Mayhem here on Homeschooled Nerd. Yes, that is right. We are once again taking the entire month of March to talk about Mario. Just Mario. Mario all Monday, every Monday. Just a whole bunch of Mario. Also, we'll be posting other people's Mario related videos from, you know, my friends as well as uh, YouTubers that I watch. Uh, just so that you guys can have some Mario content on days that we don't upload a video because I can't do that many videos, obviously. As well as putting some of my favorite artwork from DeviantArt on my favorites on my DeviantArt profile. So you can check out the social links in the description below. I'll have links to all of them down there. There won't be as much Mario stuff on Homeschool Learn gameplay, mostly because I've already got so many Let's Play projects going on, as well as Ukulele is coming out here in a few days, so I'll be playing it on that channel as soon as it comes out. But I will try to get a couple Mario videos done on that channel as well. But anyway, none of that is important right now. Right now, we just want to talk about Mario, so let's play some Mario. Hey guys, making a video? Nah, man, we're just sitting here with cameras pretending to record. This isn't even scripted at all. Great, because I want to show you guys some statistics. What you think? I wonder how you spell postbox. Postbox. I have no idea what any of that means. Turns out there's way more guys than girls watching our videos. The red area here represents all the times that Joe was in a video. The blue area represents all the times that guys actually watched our videos. I don't like it. That's a lot of blue. So wait. Girls don't like our channel? Well, some of them do. Yeah, but they're not watching for the content. I mean, mom is, and grandma, and my girlfriend. But aside from that, they're not watching for anything that I did. They're watching for Joe. I mean, just look at him. Boy. Oh man, wait, I think I figured it out. I mean, it's so offensive. A princess gets kidnapped by a turtle and has to be saved by a fat plumber? I mean, that's like 30 shades of gray sexist. Don't you mean 50 shades of gray? Yeah, the human eye can only determine between like 30 shades of gray, so you all know what that means. It's a lie. Oh man, sure wish I had a dollar for every time I thought that. Oh man, there's gotta be some way that we can win ladies back to our channel. Joe, do you got anything? I, I do have something. <laughs> Joe, what's that? Joe, you're amazing! Did you just puke out a game? That's right, it's Super Princess Peach, a game released for the Nintendo DS in 2006, which reversed the whole princess saving cliche, giving us the opportunity to play as Princess Peach on a quest to save Mario, and see the true power of the Princess of Peaches. That sounds kind of inappropriate now that I think about it. A lot of people really hate Peach and act like having her be the damsel of distress in every single game is the worst thing ever. Honestly, I don't really mind her being the damsel in distress, so at the same time, it is cool when she gets her own spin-off things. She may be the damsel in distress a lot of times, but when she has to, she can actually kick a lot of butt. One instance that comes to mind is of course Super Smash Brothers, but Peach is actually always been designed to be a strong, albeit delicate character. She's got an independent nature often going off doing her own thing, leaving her ward toes worth having to worry about her well-being. I mean, don't get me wrong, Peach has her bad sides to be sure. She seems like a ditz most of the time, and she can get kidnapped by pretty much anything and everything, whether it has hands or not. But being weak-hearted is not one of those flaws. One of my favorite versions of Peach actually comes from the Super Mario Adventures comic strip that ran in the Nintendo Power magazine in the 1990s. In it, not only was Peach really confident a lot of times, but she actually stole a show from Mario and Luigi a couple of times. And also, she looks really hot in overalls. So I know it's kind of off topic, but in the comic series, Luigi traded clothes with the princess. I mean, you don't think about it much when you're just reading it, but when you stop thinking about it, Luigi just like stripped the unconscious princess so he could change to her gown and go save Mario. I don't want to think about this now that I'm there saying it. Anywho, Super Princess Peach. It's the first time Peach has gotten a game all to herself, and believe it or not, it's actually really charming. The game starts out with Bowser searching for some vibe scepter, which is said to have a lot of power. What kind of power, you ask? Emotional power. After using it in Peach's castle, Toads all get thrown into a frenzy of different emotions, and Bowser's troops are able to capture Mario, Luigi, and Toad. Or... A toad, I guess. So Princess Peach decides to jump into action and save Mario. I actually don't know exactly what was going on because of this Toad mini game going on at the bottom screen while Toads were explaining things. Oh, that's what I'm doing. Uh, how am I supposed to focus on this? 
I can't focus on the story. But when I was done, I had this talking umbrella, so that's pretty neat. I think his name is Perry or something, but hey, Peach seems to like him, so that's all that matters. Yeah, let's go kill some bad guys. So getting started with the first area in Ladida Plains, we begin our quest for Mario. The game is pretty basic, 2D platformer, you can jump, hit stuff with your parasol, but the main mechanic of the game is Princess Peach's vibes. That's right, this is a game where the main mechanic is the emotional instability of a girl, changing Peach's emotions with the touch of a button in order to get through puzzles. Guess so much for appealing to the ladies on this one. But in all seriousness, it's actually a surprisingly fun mechanic. You have four different vibes you can use to get through puzzles. There's a super happy one where you fly through the air making a tornado, the angry one where you burn everything around you, a sad one where you drown enemies with your tears, and the normal one which the only use I know know of is to get these tiny Goomba babies off of you. Different vibes can be used to get to different puzzles in order to progress or get to unlockables. Rescuing toads, puzzle pieces, songs, the normal stuff. None of the puzzles are super hard to figure out, and once you've done it once, you'll find yourself running through them pretty fast, which I actually kind of like. No wasting time trying to figure something out, instead you just see a thing, change your mood, and get through it. Although I gotta say, Peach's emotions are cute and all, but they sometimes throw the feeling off a bit. Oh look, a hot air balloon! This'll be so peaceful floating through the air without a care in the world. But wait. How do I make it go? Oh yeah! This isn't exactly what I had in mind, but whatever. Outside of puzzles, the most handy vibe is definitely the tornado vibe, as it allows you to fly through the air, saving yourself from fatal falls, as well as avoiding the more difficult platforming challenges. Oh no, look at all these spears! Looks like it's a real platforming challenge coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Skill mode engaged! Alright, I did it! And I didn't even have to do it right. And that just goes to show, ladies and gentlemen, that sometimes the most powerful weapon in the world is a woman's emotions. I Maybe I should cut that one out. How long you're able to use different vibes is determined by your vibe gauge, which can be upgraded at the store and refilled during levels by collecting these blue vibe orb thingies or by devouring enemies with your parasol. Oh, just look at that Koopa. He looks so happy strolling around having a good time. I think I just peed myself. The sprites in this game are really adorable. It has the same style of graphics as the Mario and Luigi series, but something about Peach's emotions just really gets to me. And don't even get me started on all the enemies with their varying emotions. And also, I gotta say, considering Peach constantly gets kidnapped, she seems to be handling herself pretty well out there. As for the music, it's really catchy. I especially like how there are different versions of all the songs based on what vibe power you're using, whether angry, happy, or sad. It changes up the music to correlate to that mood. It's awesome! The only thing I really have to complain about in this game is probably the platforming. Peach slides around quite a bit, which isn't unusual for Mario games, but for some reason I just have even more trouble with the platform in this game than I do in even normal Mario games. Then again, that very well could have something to do with the fact that the game's primary focus isn't generally on platforming, especially when you take into account that the tornado vibe allows you to fly through platforming segments. However, when your vibe gauge runs out or the game doesn't let you fly, it can get pretty frustrating. Fortunately, however, you can purchase an upgrade in the shop for your umbrella, which allows you to hover for short periods, which makes platforming segments like these much easier. Speaking of the shop, there's a shop in this game. It's mostly just a place where you can spend your coins while buying a few upgrades and unlockables. Sadly, the items are limited as any abilities you actually need are given to you in the levels you need them in. Aside from upgrading your health and vibe gauge, the only really handy bonus items are the Pound Brella, which allows you to perform a ground pound, and the previously mentioned Float Brella. The other abilities are certainly interesting, not really very useful outside of their specific segments they're designed for, but what else is new? There's the one that allows you to do this. So that's pretty cool. And then there's a submarine one that allows you to go underwater in segments. Kind of annoying thing is, in order to defeat enemies, you have to blow bubbles at them by blowing into the mic, which I kind of have a love-hate relationship. On one hand, it's cool they have some interactivity like this, but at the same time, yeah. I think I just spit on my DS. One thing I'm especially impressed with is just how detailed all the levels are. Each area feels unique even within levels, making it really easy to know where you've been, which is especially important since there are a lot of areas to explore while searching for songs, puzzle pieces, mini games, and the three toads hidden in each level. The game was nice enough to link all these areas together, however, meaning no backtracking is involved, so that's a good thing. At the end of every world is a boss fight. For the boss, however, there's always a challenge to get through using the touch screen. Sometimes these are really easy, but at other times, maybe I'm not doing it right? I don't know. Hey, I booth, hey, booth, booth, you got here, booth, booth, hey, hey, get out of here, ghosts. So in the end, we finally make it to Bowser's Villa on Vibe Island, and having some more challenging levels, we're finally ready to face off. Wait, you have to get all the toads? It's only one thing to do. Gonna get through this the homeschool nerd way, with a talking parasol and maximum effort. 
Qui de montage I did it. This guy thinks he can defeat me. That makes me mad. So then we face off against Bowser in an epic showdown. All right, I did it. Time to rescue tomorrow. Out of here, Ouija. Bro hugs can wait. Girlfriends first, then bros. That's that's how. That, that, that's the way that works. So Peach, Mario, Luigi, and probably the hundreds of toads we've rescued throughout the levels return home to the Mushroom Kingdom castle, where I assume everyone's calmed down by now and the game ends by telling you, The Vibe Scepter has strange and mysterious powers, that's for sure. Somewhere, someone might possibly be using it right now. What? Your dad got mad at you the other day, you say? Your mom's been laughing happily a lot? Maybe, just maybe, the Vibe Scepter is hidden away in your house somewhere? Oh no, we're not. No, no. I see that. I see it. I see it there. No, we're, no. We're not. We're not doing. We're not. No deal. No jokes. No. No. Okay. No. None of those. No. I'm not doing it. I see it, but I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm not. Just go. No. We're not doing that. Go. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more, then you can check out this video I did last week of reading some of you guys' comments while playing Super Mario Run. It was a good old time. And also, if you want to see more Super Princess Peach, you can check out this video I did only on Homeschool Nerd Plays, where I play Super Princess Peach. It's the first in a series. I, I think I'll do more. I don't know. It was whatever. Anyway, I'll see you guys next Monday for a new Watch Mario Mayhem video. Till then, take it easy. Homeschool Nerd, signing out.